Hey guys, welcome to day 3 recap. First of all, I have to make a small announcement. The Twitch, well, the live stream will remain on Twitch and I won't be exporting uh, those videos anymore to YouTube. I'll just make those small recaps. It kinda saves me some time and the quality from live stream doesn't seem to be very good so I don't really want it on YouTube. I'm trying to improve my quality video quality at least on YouTube so I want it that way if you guys really want to see them on YouTube you can't follow my live stream or what, for whatever reason doesn't matter uh, well I guess I can bring them back but I think that's might not be the best choice anyway I will still leave those videos and highlights on Twitch so you can check them there if you want but uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna keep them on YouTube. Anyway, going into this session, we had Malacca as the fastest growing country with the 500 development in the previous session and in less than 30 years, they made basically 300 more development, which is an insane growth for them. Now, the reason that I'm start starting this uh, recap in Asia is that there is a huge potential war between Ming and Malaya. You should notice that there is no Malacca anymore, it's Malaya now. As you can see, Ming took those few coastal territories near Malaya, making their spot very, very dangerous. And basically, as a reprisal, Malaya vassalized Lanna and they are now annexing Pegu. They already have one fort here. So I guess they are kind of preparing, making a setup for a defensive position against Ming, which is a good thing. But I do not know if they had any deals before this. So Ming still might decide to attack them if they. If they think that they should really but I do not know so those are some internal issues between Ming and uh, Malaya but seeing that Ming already pretty much killed Japan the vassalized Josegi I do not know if we'll have Japan player once again in this session I doubt it because they lost like almost half of the territory and they are really they're in a really bad position right now also Korea has been occupied by Ming I assume they are gonna be vassalized or annexed. I think vassalized. Because why would you spend admin points when you can just deploy annex them later on? Uh, Versus expansion doesn't matter for Ming, of course, because they have everything vassalized and really they don't have any strong uh, neighbors, so they don't have to worry about. Now, in the Europe or Eurasia, there is a huge threat of Mughal Empire. Now, if you remember from the last review, Mughals had 4,000 ducats debt, and those were really hard to repay. They were not in the best shape, even though they completely destroyed Moscow. I think they have an alliance with Sweden. Let's actually switch to Mughal. Okay, yes, they do have alliance with Sweden. So they partitioned Moscow, which kinda pissed Poland off, because I don't know why. I guess Lithuania was allied to Mughals or, no, or Sweden or some something, something. I know they prevented Poland from getting Lithuania or some sort, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I just, just know that Poland was very pissed about that and they were trying to get a coalition against Mughals and trying to get Western Europe to start doing something already and finally they were able to make a huge coalition against well Ottomans and Mughals here is the thing Mughals started westernizing and as soon as that happened that meant well since Mughals are neighboring Ming once they are westernized and once they are had a had in tech compared to compared to Ming, they'll be Ming will be able to westernize off Mughals, which is a very very serious threat to everyone else in the world. And 
Earthling westernizers well. That there's 2000 development country, I'm uh, including their vessels into their development. Westernizing with already insane income, with even more maximum power, I don't think they will be able, anyone will be able to stop them. So the coalition tried to at least slow it down. Now there was, I guess before this war there was only one country that could declare war on the Gauls directly. That was Poland, but I don't know why they didn't do it. Instead it was Castile declaring war on Ottomans, who at the time, I believe the coalition thought that uh, Ottomans were westernizing. I also thought they were westernizing, but I didn't get a pop-up for Mughals, so I didn't know if they were actually westernizing. It ended up, it turned out that Ottomans weren't actually mobile, uh, westernizing, but anyway, the, the war started. So there was a huge coalition of Castile, France, England, Austria, Saxony, Poland, anyone else? Uh, could be Portugal? Yeah, they're in the war also. But pretty much every player in Europe against Mughals and Ottomans. And as you can see, Ottomans were crushed heavily there. Now, at, a, at the, that, that point, like at the declaration of war point, I was still allied to Ottomans due, due to previous deals about Venice. And I decided to not to join any side. Well, actually, by deciding not to join Ottomans, I got the truth with Ottomans. So even if I wanted to join on the coalition side, I still couldn't do the truth. Which is a bad thing, right? Anyway, there should be some deals about this piece, I believe. Steel wants this piece of Africa, which they declared war for. I don't know why, maybe because of the fort. Let's see, they have nothing important to gain from that. Oh, there is our good claim. Maybe that's why they want it. I really don't know what's the reason for focusing on that, that piece of territory. It's really crappy land, but whatever. From what I know, and that might not be completely accurate, the current peace offer is uh, Byzantium getting together in the back as their core, Castile gets this, Poland gets, I believe, uh, I believe these lands, and then they take all of the money from Ottomans or something like that. The thing is, they cannot really directly hurt Mughals, and Ottomans seem to be seem to be willing to get out of the war and just surrendering to the coalition. Though there is also a thing that some countries might leave the coalition before the war ends because they're not too happy about their gains, or they just don't see this war as a good way to prevent Ming from westernizing. Now, really, it should be Castile, England. Or, well, maybe Portugal and France stopping Ming in the late game because they they are the only ones that can actually get the access for their colonies over there. But they don't seem to be doing that well, actually. Aside from Portugal, I don't think any country has a lot of colonies. Let's see. So there is a Portug Portuguese Brazil, which is called Germany 7-1 Brazil. Uh... And then there are a few provinces colonized by Castile in Caribbean, but I don't know. Like, did he only? Yeah, seems like he only colonized uh, important trade nodes, like important uh, what's it called trade centers, which I guess is a decent thing. But I was really expecting Castile to colonize far more. I don't know what's the reason for not doing that. Like compared to Portugal, they oh they have this again. Well, I mean that still doesn't make too much sense to me. Like they maybe it's still too early, but I think I had more colonized land than Serbia in the previous game than still right now. Anyway, uh, going back to Europe to our stuff. 
So, switch to... Oh, by the way, Portugal has a lot of ducats. Anyway, switching to our country. I couldn't make any aggressive moves towards Ottomans, but I figured since they were focusing on expanding into Mamluks and Ethiopia, trying to, I guess trying to get those gold mines, even though I think they didn't get them. No, not yet. But they will eventually go for all those gold, gold mines, I guess. Um, I figured, well, you know, the original deal was they get uh, Greek coast, which was from Venice here. And then I was guaranteed to get Epirus, Achaea and Moria. But no one mentioned who's gonna get the rest of the Greece, Crete, Rhodos, all of that stuff. So I risked a bit and I just went went into it. This was Epirus, by the way. And I just conquered it, released Byzantium, and then won another war with uh, Venice. I mean against Venice and fed Byzantium their course which was a really great thing for me because Ottomans didn't I guess they didn't really pay too much attention to it they didn't really care about that that much because they could just expand over here like crazy and they were focusing on that now there is another war with Italy I mean with Venice going on right now in the first war with Venice since they Austria had still had a truce with them and when it still remained as a huge naval power, I needed a support, some naval support. Which is one of the reasons we don't really have that much money right now, even though we won a few wars and got a lot of money from those wars. I had to, I had to ask for naval support from France, they provided navy, they've beaten the Venetian fleet and I gave them 50% of the money I got from Venice. Actually, I think uh, maybe a bit more. Anyway, the important thing was I, I got the Venetian land that I wanted. Oh, that's good. And now we're in, we are in a second war with the Venice, trying to get some some cores for Florence, boost them as you can see there on my vessel. That's another story that I have to talk about there. Well, but anyway, from this war with Venice I'm gonna take this, Maya, and I think I'm gonna take Rhodos, unless it they have active rebels, so I don't want to deal with them. Uh, we don't really have the navy to transport so many troops right now. I do not know. How many troops do they have there? Let's see. Oh, 9k. Yeah, I don't, don't really want to go there. Why waste manpower? So I might not take it. Although, Byzantium, Byzantium has a claim there. Ah oh, well. I'll see. Now the story about Venice. You probably remember that I talked about Venice and I couldn't reveal too many details about them in the previous recap. I think as I was anticipating that at some point Venice would turn against me. And didn't really expect that to happen in a second session because really they were in no, pos no position to do that. I mean that would be just silly. But as Austria got wrecked and lost like pounds of their course to Styria, Venice grew stronger and they were more confident that they could actually beat, not only beat me and get all of their land that wanted they wanted from me, but they also wanted to dismantle HRE, which is ridiculous, they, they just can't do that. Like, that's way too greedy. Anyway, um, uh, looking to Venetian allies, I saw they were allied with France and I figured, well, uh, those two are very strong allies, maybe we should do something about that. But luckily, due to Venice being extremely greedy, not only that they wanted entire coast of Balkans, like all over here, this, this, entire Greece, Albania, Zadaragusa, Croatia, all of that, basically everything that has Venetian trade node or Ragusa or Constantinople trade node and that is coastal. Like, they would let me... Okay, so they, they said they would let me keep my land over here, but I imagine they would attack attack even for that at some point. But, aside from that, okay, so... I figured, well, you're playing Venice, you have a chance of just forming Italy, why, why wouldn't you do that? And, yes, they wanted to do that, but they also wanted to get Genoa, they wanted to get a lot of 
trade power over here, and France didn't like that. So, basically, Fra France made an ultima ultimatum there. You know, if, if you're gonna go into Genoa, I'm just gonna kick you. And uh, Venice didn't like that, so they, they still decided to go though with the greed, greedy path, and th there was the break in relations between France and Venice. Now, I used that and figured, well, you know, since Venice is eventually going to attack me, let's see who I could ally to prevent them. Poland didn't seem trustworthy at that point, and I didn't think they would help much. Austria was in really terrible shape. Saxony was also in terrible shape. They seem to be doing much better right now. Also, Ottomans would definitely not help me against Venice because they probably want both of us to die, but eventually they chose to help me. Doesn't matter. But my only potential ally who really wanted to kill Venice was France. So I made some secret deals with France that it, should we go to, should either of us go to war with Venice, uh, they, the second party would help, basically. Since France had a navy, I had an army, and I was really close to them, I could get, get an easy CB on them, also all that stuff. So that plan was to prevent Venice from conquering me, but since Venice fucked up earlier, well, might still go with it. I mean, I needed a fleet, France wanted money, so why not provide it? And there we wrecked Venice. Now the initial plan was to get Dalmatia and get some land into in Italy because I couldn't really expand over here. This was all strong uh, Ottoman claim, and I didn't. I was at that point allied to Ottomans, and I didn't plan any attacks on them. So why fight players when you can just fight AI? This was going to Castile, so I don't want to bother with that. Also, I think I don't think Rome should would be a good target so basically we just get small kingdom over here feed it to one of our vessels Florence ideally because they have a lot of cores there and that's pretty much it we round up the territory nicely now the issue was the Dalmatia that should have gone to us was taken by Austria in the previous war with Venice which really pissed me off because I warned them like hey I wanted that I really need that I really, 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 really need that, and they still took it, so I was quite pissed, and I had no no way of getting into Italy. At that point, Pope, I think, was allied to both Milan and, and France. Well, I guess I could convince France not to join that war, but then Milan would, and Milan, Milan was very, very strong here. If you remember correctly, they... let's see... Uh, Quite sure they had more, yeah, they had more land over there. Pretty sure they, they had more. Not, they might have been forced to uh, remove their claims, of course, on some of the land, but they were really strong and they didn't want to fight them. Because why waste your men? So, at some point, Pope, I think, I just think France made the wrong choice. By attacking Milan. They attacked for I believe Savoy and Kors and in that war Pope broke the alliance with Milan or actually I think Pope was in also in that war and they lost a lot of troops. I attacked Pope. Milan decided not to join them because Milan had no troops and was in a war with France so I got on Kona and that allowed me to claim Urbino and then later on get Arezzo and release Florence, which was a really great thing because now we have a vessel there and I don't have to spend admin points in acquiring that land. Which is amazing. And I also don't have to deal with rebels, I guess. Now, as for the next session, uh, basically, depending on what comes out from this war, from the coalition war, I might make some move on moves on Ottomans, but. Uh, it's really risky and I still have land to gain here so it really depends on how things develop I think there might be another war against Mughals like the coalition war that might be started by Poland eventually because they have this Caucasia and they have I mean they, they have 
uh, border with Gauls now. Eventually they will probably want to fight Sweden and Lithuania. So there are all possibilities for wars. But for now we're gonna go grow slowly. We're gonna get Romania and then start a war with uh, Pisa, get Pisa and Siena and finally get friends from Pope which will round up our vassal over here in Italy. I'll probably make some deals with Austria and France. I guess France is going to take Milan and stuff over there. Austria take takes this and I would like to get like maybe these two, maybe maybe Ferrara also. I think that would be that would make a really nice border there. And I don't know. Naples is most likely going to be annexed by Castile, so I don't know if Castile is going to make any moves into Italy. They might take Rome if they want it, but yeah, we'll see. Anyways guys, stay tuned for Sunday stream. There is also a new U U4 game on uh, starting this Saturday. That, that one is much earlier at 2 p.m. Central European time. You might want to check that out. I'll leave the links in the description. Have fun, stay tuned for more streams.